Welcome back, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. I have my good friend, business partner, friend, mentor in the insurance space, Steve Parisi, here to educate us on how we can use our high cash value life insurance policies for not just leveraging and acquiring more assets and creating cash flow and borrowing and all those wonderful things, but there's also another element to a life insurance policy that can come in use, right? It doesn't have to be the, the main thing, but it can absolutely be a tremendous use in retirement in those years when you've accumulated your wealth. Once you reach the top of that mountain of financial independence or financial freedom, and now you're in the decumulation phase, we're going to distribute wealth from those different assets, how we can you know, use an example here today that Steve has for us on the cash value distribution, how we could do that, what are, our, what are our options with that, and how to make sure that we can create a significant amount of tax-free income via life insurance. So Steve, I'm gonna hand it off to you, my friend. Thank you for taking the time, and let's get right into the nitty-gritty details because as you know, your audience loves it. They love the meat and potato uh, videos where you just go right into the details with the whiteboard and everything on my channel it's the same rhythm so my audience loves you they, they love the details so give it to them raw and unedited and we're going to take our notes <laughs> thank you my friend i appreciate it yeah talking about life insurance is always a fun fun thing to do so talking about the income phase meaning using a life insurance policy specifically to take income that's always been a really popular concept and the reason why is because if you do everything right with a life insurance policy, the income you take can be all tax-free. A lot of times you'll see life insurance policies sold or marketed purely on that concept alone. The idea of taking income in retirement, I've got a tax-free benefit, meaning you can, again, you can do it right and get it all tax-free. I'll talk about exactly how to do that, but that's the reason why. And also you have guarantees in that contract as well. So what you can do, if, if you're very, very conservative, you could even say, here's how much income you can take from a life insurance policy on a guaranteed basis. So worst case scenario, the minimum guarantee, and it's tax-free. So that that's where people are often attracted to it because I've got some of my money in an asset that's not tied to the stock market. There's no risk, it's a fixed asset. And I have some predictability as far as what I'm able go, be, going to be able to pull when I'm in retirement, again, via tax-free income. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? No, all, all clear there. I uh, definitely would like to uh, dive. We, we want to dive right yeah. into, into okay. the, your example here. We know it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let, let's do that. Uh, so with a life insurance policy, so we've got one that I just put together yesterday evening. This is actually based on a situation where someone had reached out to us. Like, you know what? I'm going to base an entire case study on this where we looked at building the policy for maximum cash value, using the policy through loans and such to buy cars in a home edition, but then also income. Let's have some fun. So the individual situation, he's starting at 44 years old. He wanted to fund a policy with a big lump sum initially. So the lump sum here, we've got $100,000 in the first year. He's got extra money in cash he wants to dump in. After that, he wanted to pay between $25,000 and $50,000 per year. We recommended, or I should say, I recommended 25K in his situation. And the reason why is aside from taking income, he plans on using the policy pretty heavily through loans. So I wanted to leave enough cash, cash flow from his perspective to be able to pay those pay those loans back. Because if you're going to take income, it makes sense to pay the loans back by the time you're going to start taking income. So the funding, we looked at 10 years. We talked about um 20-year funding period as well, or I put that together in the presentation, but we looked at 10. This is based on a mass mutual 10 pay, this particular illustration. So we've got the funding, performance looks good, breaking even between years four and five, just about 90% in the first year. So it's beefed up for the cash value, like that. that's what he's interested in. So again, he started at 44. This illustration here is going to display income coming out 
beginning uh, age 65 or 64 when we look at it. And just for, for your awareness too, and everyone watching this, these income illustrations, I've got them on Excel, but we put them on Excel because when we look at the actual illustration, here's what they look like. <laughs> Supplemental values, part one. Do you see the death benefit here anywhere? No. So we've got to go to part two where we get a breakdown of the life insurance figures. So we are going to go through the illustration or we would go through that with anyone that wants to and we would from a compliance standpoint too. However, for the sake of our conversation today, we'll keep it simple on Excel. I promise everything you see on Excel matches that illustration you just saw because we just exported it to Excel. So again, funded for 10 years, then not paying anything for another 10 years, he is borrowing and repaying during this time period, but then starting to take income. So in purple, we're going to see exactly how much he's pulling out per year. So starts it after year 20, so at age 64 in this illustration, and he takes 35K per year. So the $35,000 per year, when you take money from a life insurance policy, there are two ways you can do it. One, you can take out what is called a policy withdrawal, or two, you can take a policy loan. In retirement, when we are taking income and we have zero desire to pay anything back, what I'll typically recommend, what I like to do, is first take withdrawals up to our cost basis, and then once we hit our cost basis, we begin to loan out the rest. And the reason why, is because when we take withdrawals, it's like withdrawing money from any account. You take it out, it's gone. It's no longer earning interest. However, it's not a loan, so it does not accrue any loan interest. And the simple answer is if you withdraw first up to your cost basis, which is how much you paid in, that is not taxable. But also when you look at the guarantees or conservative illustration, you're typically able to pull out more money. So it's, it's a bit safer, in my opinion, as far as showing illustrations to someone when we run the numbers conservative i'd rather undershoot what we think they can get because then if they can get more they're happy if we overshoot it and they can get less that can become a problem okay so before you go any further yeah. on that on that point is there a world where a client or somebody would start with loans if they for whatever reason don't do a reduced paid up at age 65 and maybe want to continue to keep funding it in in that case would it be more advantageous to not do a withdrawal at that age and do loans instead um that's a good question so if if there's a chance that they might want to continue to pay the loan interest or add money to the policy out of pocket that's where loans can make sense but if their goal is purely taking income and they want it tax free usually we'll recommend withdrawing up to the cost basis first and then flipping to loans. And the main reason why is when you look at the guarantees and, and looking at history and what corporations do when they will practice this strategy for their executives, that's typically what they will practice. Withdraw first, then begin to take out loans. If you take a loan initially, you're going to begin to accrue loan interest right out of the gates. And like if I run an illustration two and a half years ago where variable loan rates were at 3%, yeah, a loan forever would look very, very good because I've got the 3% cost to borrow. And then also I'm getting a dividend on the entire cash value. The issue with that is if that variable loan rate adjusts, so like with Mass Mutual two and a half years ago, 3% for the Mass Mutual 10 pay product, now it's 5.7% or 5.4 or something like that. I got to look at it. Next month, March, it'll be 5.04%. Point is, it's still a lot higher than the three it was. That means a lot less income can be pulled if I'm not paying the loan interest. Because what a policy does, if I'm not going to pay the loan interest out of pocket, the policy is going to take a loan against the cash value to pay that loan interest. So there's going to be drag on the policy there. So just to alleviate that risk when someone is purely taking income, we'll typically withdraw first because that extends the time period that I have to have loan interest accruing where I'm not paying it. Got it. Okay, that's clear. Mm -hmm. Cool. So here's what I want to hit on here. If you look at blue, 
here's how much he pays in per year. And then to the right in black, this is total out of pocket. So if this is you, you've paid a total of $325,000 over 10 years, then you paid nothing for another 10 years, and then you begin to take $35,000 per year. You'll notice the first year you take 35, what is your total outlay, your total out of pocket drop to? All right, exactly by the amount yep. that we uh, withdrew. So you're at 290 now. 290 and you'll see continues to drop because we're pulling 35K per year. You're also seeing your cash value is gradually decreasing. Death benefits gradually decreasing as well. But here's what I wanna hit on. At year 30, your total outlay is in the red. So what that means is one, we've gotten all of our money back and we've done this through withdrawals. So actually you can see it here. So when we're taking this $35,000 per year, do you see any loans accruing? No. No. But as soon as we hit this point in time, year 30, we see a $25,000 loan is taken. The reason why is because we took 35, 10 of it was a withdrawal, which got us to our cost basis. So we've now withdrawn a total of 325. And then we're beginning to take loans, the loans from that point forward. And the reason why is because that's how you keep it tax free. Got it. And, and, you know, I think oftentimes when we look at income distribution, you know, 35 grand doesn't sound like a whole lot of money, but, mm -hmm. you know, you, you divide that out over 12 months that's that's 2900 in tax free Correct. income per mm -hmm. month if we were to look at the average social security paycheck you know yeah. the average pension that people are are receiving when we when we add that social security for that individual plus this or plus a pension this really ends up being quite a a, a very helpful sort of bridge uh, to maybe get to that number that we would need to to yeah. cover all the needs and expenses for that household. Um, yeah. So I just want to really emphasize like 35K, it, it doesn't sound a whole lot to me, mm -hmm. right? But I know, and, and it may not sound like a whole lot to, to others, but when you divide that number by 12, then the number starts to look like, oh, wow, okay, that that alone could cover a majority of my food, gas, uh, yeah. light bill, electric, like it can cover almost all my needs. Yeah. Right. That's key. Yeah. And, and thanks for mentioning that because a lot of times the, the approach is, is either A, I am using this to supplement other income sources I have, or B, I'm not taking income initially. We'll look at look at a model like this soon. I'm taking income from other sources. I'm going to let this sit and grow for a while. That way, when I begin to take income, I can take a lot more than the 35. But we'll look at that in a minute. Correct. That's another huge factor there for those that are watching where it's like, oh, maybe maybe there's a world where let me let me hold off on pulling yeah. from Social Security and let that grow for three, four more years. Let me hold off on accepting my pension and use the, the policy again as a bridge to maybe buy time right before retirement or a couple of years after retirement. And that would give you the time to allow these other investments to possibly grow a little bit more, have that guaranteed payout. Maybe someone has an annuity that if we let it sit a little bit longer till it matures, so much that we can you know do here. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, definitely. The annuity is a nice supplement sometimes too, for, for some people, not for everyone, but it, it can work nicely for someone that really likes the guarantees. So down here, where you've got this negative 725, what that represents is how much more you pulled out in income than what you paid in. So you paid in 325, you got that back, plus another 725 in income, and it's all been tax-free. So the if you add up these total disbursements, it's about 1050000 over the, this time period. We're assuming they, they kicked the bucket in their 90s. And you're, these numbers are based off of a guaranteed minimum? No, I'm not, oh, okay. I'm not, okay. Yeah. These are based on the dividend, but I did round things down because we typically, we typically yeah. will. I like okay. even numbers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. so this is assuming um, you know, the guaranteed rate plus the dividend of the insurance yeah. company. 
and we're mm-hmm. not actually getting charged loan interest until age 73 right. um, mm-hmm. after taking distributions for over five years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Correct. I think it was eight, right? In total eight. Is that eight? You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So your earlier point, 35, uh, is that enough? And I don't want to put more money into the policy to get more income. Well, here's another strategy. See Daisy, exact same policy. But if he said, I don't need my money at 65, I've got other sources. Let's pretend I wait until just about age 70. And now there's four four grand a month at 48K per year. And what you'll see is if we do defer it, so I'm gonna pull income, we're assuming we kick the bucket in our early 90s here. If you defer it, you are going to be able to pull more money out. And the reason why is because we're just letting it sit in the policy and grow a bit longer. That That's the reason why. But it, it again, depends on his situation. So if he says, okay, yeah, I'm gonna defer it because I don't need it, nor do I want it right now, that's an option. And then also, here's what it looks like if he waits until 75 years old, so I have 70 per year. And you'll notice in all of the illustrations, we are leaving some cash in the tank. This way, in the event we need to pull more, or if the loan interest rate goes up, the dividend rate goes down, we've got enough money left over to say, okay, like, I don't have to worry about it blowing up or them or having to tell them, hey, you can pull out only 65000 for the last five years or something like that. Typically, we need more money as years pass because everything costs more. That's usually what happens. So the last thing we want to do is over promise and under deliver. We'd rather shoot it conservative. This way people can have more of a realistic expectation of what they can actually pull as opposed to trying to show high numbers just to win the sale, which which we don't do. Got it. Okay, that's clear. I like I like that. What are some conversations or have you been in any situation so far with any clients that have reached that stage where they're now taking income from their policies? I know you've been in the industry now for over a decade. Yeah. So I'm just curious to know if, if when yeah. someone gets to that point, what are some of the conversations that you are you know, educating the client on in terms of like, hey, how, how are you spending your money? How are we you know, distributing this? Do you show like super low midpoint and then like almost aggressive in terms of distributions? Yeah. So I like to do all three of those. Like I've, I've done that before showing guaranteed midpoint and then the current dividend rate, just so I can see realistically, what does it look like, especially super conservative to hit on your question, as far as having conversations with people that are specifically taking income from a life insurance policy right now. No, uh, very, very, yeah, very rare. We've got people in retirement that have had policies for a while, uh, but they haven't need to pu- needed to pull the income. Uh, they haven't wanted to yet. They're still using the policy for other things. Um, but when that time does come, what I would progress through is is really asking how much they want to pull because typically they have a sense. Or if they say, hey, I want X amount of income. Can you look at my finances right now? I've got X amount of dollars in a 401k. Maybe I have an annuity or I'm considering one to get some guaranteed income. I've got social security. Like here's my income. It's at $80,000. I'd like it to be 110. I'm not sure if I should pull some additional cash from these other assets or use a life insurance policy. Can you show me which one makes the most sense so I can definitely get the 110? But also, am I concerned about leaving money to the next generation? If so, it's probably going to make more sense to pull from other assets before the life insurance policy. But if they say, I don't want to deal with taxes right now, like I just want it to be tax free, then you do it from the life insurance policy. And here's the fun part. It's not a set it and forget it. So one year I can pull from the life insurance policy, then I can take it. Yeah. Break some years it's a lot, some years it's a little. You don't have to just flip the income switch on and it's a fixed amount indefinitely. You do have flexibility, and that's the kind of stuff that I'm going to talk about with someone, remind them of that, build the awareness. Because usually, what happens when you're having a conversation about a particular product with respect to finance, all the nuances you'll hear, I didn't know you can do that. I wasn't aware of that. Oh, I, I was worried about this, but I didn't have to be worried about it with the way you just explained it. So really, like how I view it is my job is to provide awareness, make things transparent, 
give them advice that I would like if if I were them just having the knowledge that I do and give them peace of mind. This way they're not worrying about something that they heard or read somewhere or they assume just based on some of the language in the contract because that happens to everyone like with all products and when we look at financial products, if we're buying a car, whatever it might be, we read things that sometimes can be scary. But then someone says, no, 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 here's how it works. I'm like, oh, I'm good. I don't got to worry about it at all. So a lot of times that's the conversation just to give them peace of mind and then showing the numbers to back it up. That's a big thing. Like show it to people. Don't just try and talk about it so I can talk myself out of have to do and work. It's like now show the numbers. Right. So one, yeah. one question here regarding when someone reaches retirement, when they want to start taking income from their life insurance policy, are we changing anything to, as it relates to the dividends, the guaranteed growth of the policy in terms of where it's going? Right. So let's assume it's a reduced paid up policy where there's no yeah. more insurance expense, there's no more, no more base premium on it. Are we having the dividends pay the loan interest during those years or is the dividends increasing the cash value which when you look at the loan interest and how it compounds compared to the growth of the cash value that way you're getting more money long term and then when the insured graduates earth they pass away the compounded interest that red column would get minus from the death benefit. You got it, yeah. And those illustrations too, so that death benefit did account for the loan balance and loan interest too. That was the net death benefit. Could you show that again? Yeah, definitely. I just wanna make sure I benefit. fully comprehend. All right, so if we just focus on the example to the right. Okay. There's the death benefit when we start to take income. So this death benefit accounts for the loan. So here. Right. So the moment I start taking income, well, yep. uh, even in the withdrawal years, mm -hmm. the death benefit is, is decreasing because of the, of the amount I'm pulling out. Correct. So the death benefit in gold to the far right represents the net death benefit. So it is deducting. Here's your loan balance right here in dark red. So right. if I die, this is the net amount that's paid to my beneficiaries income tax free. Mine, uh, so that is also including the loan interest column. Correct. That has, okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Because when we look at, you know, where it says, okay, a million eight, one million eight thousand four hundred. And if we look at the next year, it's 985. Well, if we did 1 million eight minus 985, that's way less than the $70,000 withdrawal I just took. Mm -hmm. Right, because so, you're, still, <laughs> you're still earning interest too is the right. thing. So yeah. we're still earning, mm -hmm. even though it's going yeah. down slightly, yeah. it's not going down as much as my withdrawal. Co correct, initially, eventually you can see it Right. So Go down faster. Point. Yeah. And so on a guaranteed basis, if we showed guaranteed what you could withdraw on income, would the, in that example, would the cash value basically stay the same? No. So when you're pulling income, like it's still going to come down. It depends how much you project really as okay. far as income per year. Yeah. I mean, it, I could make it stay the same, right? If I take a small dollar amount out, but it's typically, typically going to decrease. Like, if I said, how much can I pull out based on the guarantees here? Just spitballing it, the same scenario might be closer to 35000 to 40000 without any okay. dividend. Even less okay. than that. Maybe. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. So when we say, here's what you can pull out on the guarantees, what, yeah. what, we're, what we're saying is based on the guaranteed growth yeah. of the cash value, if you were to simply pull out what it's growing by, Mm -hmm. The policy would last forever. It's not going to lapse on you. C correct. So if we run, what's the max income I can pull, assuming dividends are never paid and only the guaranteed rate is applied? 
if you if you choose that as your income number, the, the net cash value will probably go up because you're still likely going to receive dividends and such. <laughs> right. But it's not going to lapse. Yeah. Despite the interest on Correct. on policy loans, right? Because Correct. when when we get yep. to age sixty five, or once we've owned the policy for twenty years, yeah, um, is it another thing that you do where you um, change the loan interest from variable to um, fixed when we get to that is that yeah a recommended thing that you do as well or or um, tell the client their option yeah good question so it, that that actually depends on the insurance company and product that i select and if that that exists so what you just, just explained um guardian offers something like that where i start out with a fixed loan loan interest rate at the 10th year i have the option to change it from fixed to variable if I do, it becomes a non-direct recognition policy, which some people like, some people don't care. I don't think that makes much of a difference when you look at the numbers. But if I keep it fixed, what happens is it's fixed forever. And at retirement, at age 65, typically, that fixed loan interest rate will drop. So with your guardian policy that's a little bit older, you've got a higher guaranteed rate, you've got a fixed rate of 6%. And at retirement, the fixed loan interest rate drops to 4%. Which is equal to the guaranteed rate of 4% on my life insurance policy. You got it. So the new one. wash. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. (laughs) When we we look at the net internal rate, um, that might be different. But if the policy is a reduced paid up, Mm -hmm. then would 4% still be? Four percent guaranteed. If, no. if no, okay, yeah. there's still expenses in there. Yeah, yeah. Like when you look at a four uh, percent guaranteed rate, the highest like that annual rate of return will be will be right around right around like three point three percent, three point three 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 four. That's when it's reduced paid. Off. When it's reduced yeah. paid up. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Gotcha. But yeah. then when you yeah. add the dividends, then it's like maybe four and a half. You got it. Yep. Okay. 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 Very very cool. You got it. Um, to get back to the question, as far as when you're taking income, like what do you do with the dividends? Do you have them still reinvested into PUAs just to build the cash value? The answer is yes. I'll usually do that. You can have your dividends applied toward the loan interest. The thing to be aware of with that is when dividends are applied toward loan interest, how it's counted for you is it counts as if you're taking that dividend in cash. So all that's going to do is drop your cost basis a little bit faster, meaning you have to switch from withdrawals to loan sooner, which, you know, won't make a huge difference when you look at the numbers. And depending on when I run that illustration and what the loan interest rate is, that option might look a little bit better than having the dividends reinvested into PUAs. But again, if I'm going to look at the guarantees and look at it more conservative, probably still gravitate toward uh, dividends purchasing PUAs. Yeah, because yeah, because yeah, e- even I thought I was like, oh, it, yeah. I'm thinking from a safety standpoint. Does it does sound safer to just have my dividend growth pay the loan interest, so I don't have that mm-hmm. compounding effect? But realize when you're eventually taking those loans out of the policy, it's ch- it's charging you loan interest on a much smaller dollar amount say the 70k or the 35k or the 48k as opposed to earning that dividends on seven hundred thousand dollars in cash value eight hundred thousand nine hundred thousand it's much more effective or efficient i would say where the compounding on that versus the amount of time it takes for your loan interest to compound almost ends up either looking similar or, or, you know, so kind of removing that stress from people because I, I'm, I'm thinking about what the average mom, dad is, is thinking like, oh my goodness, if I don't pay this loan interest, it's going to compound on me and it's going to become this huge number. And they would be right. They're like, yes, over the years, the, the number does compound and, and, it, and it gets large, but so do your cash value, the dividends, on, on a guaranteed basis, if mm-hmm. especially if we went to a reduced paid up, you're no longer funding it, you've removed yeah. all the insurance expense from it, and all you're doing is taking income, 
And again, to your point, it's not like we have to stick to a certain dollar amount in terms of how much we pull, because maybe there's a year where you, maybe you didn't travel to five different countries in at 69, right? You did it when you were 65, 66, and then it kind of slowed down. And so instead of going to five countries, you only did two this year. So you really didn't need to pull out um, as, as much money, right? And you can do it on a monthly basis, which I think also has a slight difference in the interest compounding as, as well. Like, I, I think bit. there's something to be said about, okay, if I withdrew 70K in one shot versus 5000 $6,000 every single month, you know, or as needed, mm -hmm. that makes a little bit of a difference, yeah? Over time, yeah, if you're doing that every year for a while, it, it would make a difference because loan interest is going to begin to compound on any loans you take the Daily. day you pull it out. Yeah, so right. if you do it all up front versus monthly versus sporadically, yeah, if you're deferring some money you're pulling out and you don't plan, plan on paying any of the loan interest ever, that's where it can really make sense. Wow. Okay, yeah. this, was re this was really good. This is very new content definitely for my audience that – they're in their late 50s, they're in their 60s, they've been funding a policy for four or five, maybe six years. And, you know, I've got a couple of clients, shout out to like John, and I got another client named John who's got like almost 50 something thousand built up in cash value. My other client, John, I know he's around almost in the, he's in the six figure range in, in cash values in his 40s. Um, you know, we've got a, uh, a couple of moms that I'm working with that have almost six figures. So they're still all of my clients right now that work with you, Steve, they're in the accumulation phase. So they're, they're not really thinking about taking income from the policy. They're, they're in the, you know, banking, become your own bank and they're financing things they're making investments and doing these different things. Um, so it's just nice to also have that conversation on, Hey, the, what could this policy do for us once we've, again, conquered, right? You've built your kingdom, built your base, you, you built your assets, you've got your properties, you've got your business and whatnot, and now it's about, you know, distributing properly. You know, the, the sequencing is something that's really un, unspoken in, it I'd is. say, in the industry, how to properly distribute income. And I would yeah. argue that when it's tax-free, it's, it's a lot better you know, and you don't have to take as much to account yeah. for taxes and different things. It's powerful. Yeah. And that's one thing too, just as our, our company has, has changed over the years and some things we're doing right now, really providing that as part of a plan for someone, like what's really, really valuable that, that people appreciate, at least just from the years of doing this is I'm interested are in a whole life insurance policy, right? Because I want to use it for loans or I want to build wealth, whatever it might be. What I really like to do is show someone how they can use that whole life insurance policy. That's like one of my favorite things to do. I know I'm a weirdo. So what, what I like to do is, is first show how do we get the right policy that maximizes the cash value and sometimes the flexibility for you. So show different options and really help you pick the vehicle that you like the most that you can fund it in the manner you like to fund it. Cause that's always step one. When people get that right, they're happy with the policy. When it's not right, they typically have buyer's remorse and question, why am I even doing this? So show them how to get the right policy that's best for them and also maximizes cash value. Then step two, show them how they can use it. If I want to buy a car, if I want to get an addition for my uh, on my home because I want to move my parents in, if I want to use it for my business or to invest in real estate, what does it actually look like? Like when I take loans, when I pay it back, maybe I can't pay it back. What does that look like? Show them the different scenarios. So step one, again, build the policy. Step two, show them how they can use it and coach them over the years. That's where we keep in touch. And then step three, how do I use it for income? When I want, want tax-free income and if I've got other assets, how does that come into the picture? Is an annuity, like we mentioned before, a potential fit? If it's not, I'll say this is not a fit. I would not recommend it in your situation, but build that for someone. Show them, here's what I'd like to do. Here's what I've seen work really, really well. Here's what corporations do and we can do the exact same thing for you. And if they look at it and say, you know, I like that, but this piece here, 
I don't know if I'd use the policy for cars or something like that. Can you show me what it looks like if I don't do that? Or I've got plans to start a business. Yeah, like here's how we pivot. Here's how we adjust. And you have fun with it. And then this way they feel really good and they've got guidance um, that that others have used successfully. And that, that I think a lot of people appreciate. Yeah, definitely. I know I appreciate it. I know just with the XL, like that's something very unique that I've yeah. only seen your office, your organization, your company do. I have, I've collaborated with other insurance agencies and I've just, I've never seen them go into that kind of depth with Excels where you can just, a client calls and says, hey Steve, can you show me what it would look like if I took out a loan to finance this car or took a loan to start this business and then what the loan interest would look like over the next 10 years if I repaid yeah. it back over a 10 year period or a five year period. And it's like your team just like pumps that out and shows it. And I, I think the client's able to like have the visual, have the conversation and make the decision, right? So again, thank you for taking the time to dive into this. On our next session, uh, those of you that are watching, you're going to really, I think, like this. We're going to do a case study on my own policy to see how I've been funding it, what it would look like if I continue to fund it, then stop funding, and then t and what, it would, what income would look like with my particular policy. I think that's going to be super fun, showing yes. what it looks like for a young adult. So those of you who are my clients and my audience that have kids around my age, 28 years old or a little bit younger, a little bit older, how you could be influencing them now say hey even if it's a couple grand a, a year starting at low 20s mid 30s and funding it over 30 40 year period is way more realistic than many of my clients that started at you know they started late frankly because they just didn't know what they didn't know finally came across it and maybe they only have a 10 year funding period or 15 year or maybe 20 um, so that's something that's a huge encouragement or action step for those of you who have children. Here's a phenomenal way to influence them to say, hey, instead of saving your money in a bank where you're not earning much, you could be saving your money in life insurance. And this could provide multiple uses for you over the course of your whole entire life. Right. So it can solve for different things along the way. It doesn't have to just be one thing. It can solve for multiple things. So that's my action step. Anything you'd like to share with my audience before we take off? No, I, I appreciate you having me on as always. Looking forward to the next call. We'll definitely do some prep prep work for that. Um, but no, thank you so much for having me. And thank you to you who's watching this very, very much. We'll have fun talking about life insurance, finance, and other products. Thanks again. Awesome. Action steps again. Talk to your kids about this. If you're an adult and you don't have life insurance and you're thinking about it, you can click the link below and get a hold of Steve and his team and they'll walk you through an entire process and they're the type of people that are like, hey, we don't think this is right for you, so they're not just going to sell you life insurance. They're going to walk you through a process, make sure that you've got the education, you've got the options in front of you, and then you can make an educated decision on how you want to move forward. So if you're interested in that, click the link below and Steve and his team will take really, really good care of you as they've done for my clients and myself. I've got four policies with Steve's team now at this point, and each and every one of them are properly designed, and they're growing, and they're doing exactly what it said it was going to do. You know, that's what I really like about that as well. It's a safe, guaranteed, liquid, tax-free asset that can, you know, provide for so many different case uses as I get older and older. So thank you again, Steve. Praises to you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll be talking soon. You as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Enjoy. Enjoy.